This is a treat to be back at the University of Florida. I haven't been here for a long time, and believe me, it's it's changed. I'm and I'm fascinated and impressed. This building we're standing in uh, didn't exist when I was here, and and I really am excited to to be here. One of the last times I was in Florida many years ago was when Kathy Deegan, the wonderful archaeologist here, uh, discovered Fort Mose over near. Uh, St. Augustine, and she asked me to come down and talk to the Black Caucus of the Florida Legislature about funding that kind of research on black history in Florida. And that was an exciting moment for me because I could see that good things were going to happen in Florida in terms of changing the way we study Florida history. And, and that's turned out to be true. You know, you're part of it, uh, Paul's part of it, this whole group is part of it. Uh, and it's it's exciting to see. I'm inspired. Do you feel it's challenging uh, today to discuss uh, the way in which we kind of take for granted how we look at Afri the African descended people on this continent and their history and what uh, actually has happened, what's revealed? Is it, a, is it a challenge to have these types of discussions in some way? It's always a new challenge. You know, the challenge when I was coming up was often whether we could even talk about these things at all. You know, we were we were breaking open, you know, just trying to get the conversation started. Now the conversation is well underway, and so now we have a new challenge, you know, of dealing with lots of people who say, oh, I need all, I've got all I need to know about that. I don't, we don't need to push further. We don't need to ask more questions, dig up more documents, do more interviews, and of course, from my perspective and probably yours as well, we're just getting going. You know, we're just getting to the good part, and and we're the more, the more you have. Once you have a nucleus, once you have the bare bones, the structure, the ideas of what how things have changed, what happened, then you can start putting meat on those bones. You start to get the the more complicated stories, the complications, the differences, the comparisons, the contrasts, the story becomes much richer, you know, and uh, and that's the exciting part of, of black Florida history right now, it seems to me, which it's reemerging as the rich story that it really is. How is it possible to renew this richness and have these conversations with students today? I just talked with a wonderful group of grad students about these very problems. You know, how do you engage with undergraduates? How do you get students thinking about it? And my answer always is you have to meet them on their own ground, where they're coming from. You can tell them certain facts, certain stories, certain, but you have to listen to them, hear where they're coming from, try to figure out why they're so receptive to some aspects of Florida history so disrespectful or ignorant of other aspects, you know, and help them broaden their minds, add to their knowledge, realize that they're not giving up one piece of the story to learn about another piece of the story, that they can walk and chew gum at the same time, and it's okay, you know. And so there's a lot of reassuring that goes into good teaching. You're encouraging people to think about a past that's not all coated with sugar. It's complicated, it's difficult, sometimes even distasteful in lots of ways. That's okay. We can handle it. We all need to talk about it, get to know each other better. Thank you very much. We'll talk a little bit later. I look forward to it.